Hi, I'm Kristen Dewan with the Arab Gulf States Institute. And I'm here today with Professor Greg Gauz, who's at the International Affairs, Professor of International Affairs at the Bush School of Government and Public Service at Texas A&M. So we're here to discuss Greg's latest piece, uh, which got published in Foreign Affairs. The United States is the last check on MBS's power. And I pulled out a quick quote because I think it kind of summarized your argument. Attempting to isolate MBS, and that's Mohammed bin Salman, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, would not force his removal from power, but rather eliminate Washington's ability to restrain his behavior abroad and to a lesser degree at home. So Greg, why do you think sanctioning MBS directly would be ineffective? So I think that if you wanna deal with Saudi Arabia and get things from Saudi Arabia, you're gonna to have to deal with MBS, right? If we decide to isolate them, we're not gonna to talk to them, we're not going to deal with them. I think that you're in effect basically saying that you don't want Saudi Arabia's cooperation on issues in the region. And that includes uh, Yemen, which is uh, a priority for the, for the Biden administration. And it includes other regional security issues. It includes energy issues. Uh, the full gamut of issues that we've uh, had dealings with Saudi Arabia with in the past. I also think that it betrays, at least in, for some people in Washington, a belief that if we isolate uh, the crown prince, we can force a change in, uh, in the power structure within Saudi Arabia, that, that it would be so damaging uh, to, uh, to Saudi Arabia to have a, a de facto leader who couldn't deal with the United States that, uh, that the Al Saud family would find somebody else. I, I think that that's a, a real mistake uh, given changes that have happened within Saudi Arabia. I think the crown prince has largely consolidated power. And I also think it's a real mistake for the United States to, to try to play into the politics of the ruling family. Uh, this is something that the Trump administration, I think, did by privileging MBS, and I think that was a mistake, but I also think it would be a mistake to think that somehow uh, the, the moral disapproval of the United States would lead to some kind of personnel change within the Al Saud family. So how can the U.S. check MBS's power then? Um, how can they affect his behavior? I think that the U.S. can affect Saudi behavior in general, uh, whether it's MBS or, or in the past, other, other rulers, uh, and in the future, should there be another ruler in Saudi Arabia, uh, because the relationship for Riyadh is extremely important. Uh, and I think that, that while the, the Saudis have options, they talk with the Russians about energy issues, they, they sell oil and buy things from the Chinese. They occasionally even buy military equipment from the Chinese. The United States is still the power that has the two things that the Saudis want most, which is an ultimate military security guarantor. And in order for, for MBS to achieve his ambitious goals in changing the Saudi economy uh, away from its, uh, its dependence on oil, he needs access to Western financial markets, to investment, to uh, not just to, to, to financial uh, markets, but also to the physical markets of, of the United States and United States allies. And given America's central position in the world financial markets and in the world economic system, uh, you need the United States to be part of that Vision 2030 economic change. So if you had the opportunity, or maybe you have the opportunity to advise the Biden administration on Saudi Arabia, where would you suggest it expends its political capital with Saudi Arabia? I think that, that aside from Yemen, which, which is understandably a, a, a priority, both I think on humanitarian grounds and on strategic grounds, uh, I think that it, it's less what we want the Saudis to do and more what we don't want them to do. And I don't think that we want uh, Saudi Arabia to be disruptive in the region the way it was with uh, the kidnapping of Saad al-Hariri back in 2017 in an effort to create a political crisis in Lebanon, uh, or the boycott of Qatar. Uh, these were things that I think just created problems in the Middle East. And, and the last thing the Biden administration wants is more problems in the Middle East. And so I think that, that it's less about what we want 
uh, the crown prince to do, I think it's more, uh, except on Yemen, where we need his cooperation and buy-in for a diplomatic solution, and more about what we would like him to, to restrain himself from doing. And that is uh, creating problems as opposed to contributing to solutions.